everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Kleena and today I'm going to be taking you through the solution to this question which is from the Higher Level Leaving Cert Paper 2022 and it's based on algebra. So let's get right into it. So question 1 part A asks us to find two values of m for which the following equation in x has exactly one solution. Now the wording of this question kind of confused me personally and it wasn't until I realized that when it says that which the following equation in x has exactly one solution can be rephrased at as that it has one root and if it has one root that's going to mean that so if you have your axis here this equation is going to look like that right so it's going to have one root it's not going to have two roots if it has two roots it would look something like this okay because it's hitting the x axis in two different points okay so it has one root now we must realize that the equation is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? So this is a minus m is b and 3 is c, okay? So I'm just going to write that out here. a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus m and c is equal to 3. So because we know that it has real equal roots, we know that it can be written in the form b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. So there's going to be two values of it, okay, but because it's only going to have one solution, it's realistically going to be a plus or a minus number, okay, and you'll see this as we go through the question, right? So minus b squared is minus m squared minus 4 multiplied by 3, multiplied by 3, okay, because a is 3 and c is also 3, is equal to 0, right? So we have m squared, because minus m squared is the same as m squared, minus 36, okay, because minus 4 by 3 is 12, multiplied by 3 is minus 36, okay, is equal to 0. So m squared is equal to 36. So we move that 36 over to this side. So m is equal to the root of 36. And the root of 36, there's going to be two values. So m is equal to plus or minus six okay so that are those are the two values of m and their integers for which the following equation in x has exactly one solution so this is our answer and for this you're going to get 10 marks there are also another few ways of going about this question and one that i'm just going to go through briefly is if you want to differentiate this equation so then you'll end up with 6x minus m let that equal to zero and then find x in terms of m. So you're going to find x is equal to m over 6. And then fill that into this equation. So you'll have 3 multiplied by m over 6 squared minus m multiplied by m over 6 plus 3 is equal to 0. And then find solutions for m. And you will find also that you'll get m is equal to plus or minus 6. So whichever way you go about it, if you come to the answer of m is equal to plus or minus 6, you're going to get your 10 marks. So let's move on to question B. Question B is quite similar to question A. It asks us to explain why the following equation in X has no real solutions. Again, it's a bit confusing with the wording if you're used to uh, using terminology with roots. You can see here that this can be rephrased as that it has no real roots. And if it has no real roots, B squared minus 4AC is going to be less than zero okay so if it has no real roots we can prove that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero now let's just take a step back because we're not at we haven't put it in this form yet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply this out until it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero so i'm going to take this here 2x plus 3 and it's squared so i'm going to do another one 2x plus 3 plus 7 is equal to zero so we have 4x squared, just multiplying out the back-to-back -back brackets. 2x multiplied by 3 is plus 6x. 3 multiplied by 2x is, an, is again plus 6x. 3 multiplied by 3 is plus 9. Plus 7, which is just here, is equal to 0. So now we have 4x squared plus 6x plus 6x. So that's going to be plus 12x. Plus 9 plus 7. So that's going to be plus 16 is equal to zero. So now what do we have? We have a is equal to four because that's the coefficient of x squared. b is equal to 12 which is the coefficient of x and c is equal to 16 which is the constant term. Now let's go back to this here. Okay so let's fill it out and prove that b squared minus 4ac is less than zero which is then proving it has no real roots or no real solutions. So b squared is going to be 12 squared minus four by a which is four by c which is 16 so now let's work out what this is. So 12 squared is 144. So now I'm going to multiply 4 by 4 by 16, and that's 256. 
So it's going to be minus 256. So that is, I'm going to use my calculator again, so 144, and then it's minus 112, which is, of course, less than zero. So then you could say, therefore, no real solutions. Now, for this question, you're going to get five marks. And also, I'm just going to point out, if you're really the type of person who grasps the concept of graphs, you could use this in this question. You could note that the graph is U-shaped and that the minimum value of the graph is plus seven. So that means that if I just draw an axis here, so if it's U-shaped and the minimum value is seven, so we can say this is seven here, it's going to look like that. And then you can see that it has no real roots. So if you want to um, draw a graph and make all the correct points here, you'll also get your five marks for that. So now we're going to move on to question C. Question C part one is, in my opinion, quite manageable in, in comparison to the rest of the question. It's asking us to show that x is equal to minus one is not a solution of 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 is equal to zero. So all we're going to do is fill in x for minus one and prove that it doesn't equal to zero. We're going to go three by minus one squared plus two by minus one plus five. So three by minus one squared is just three by one. So it's just three. Two by minus one is going to be minus two. And then plus five is equal to three minus two plus five. Okay, so three minus two is one plus five is six. And you can say that does not equal to zero. So we've shown that it's not a solution of this question. So now we're going to move on to the next part of the question, question C part two. And this asks us to find the remainder when three X squared plus 2x plus 5 is divided by x plus 1. That is, find the value of c when 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 is written in the form x plus 1 multiplied by ax plus b plus c. So this is basically just a long division question, but a lot of students might not have seen one like this before. Okay, usually when you're doing your long division questions, so you will have your equation here and you're dividing this in, right? And you'll get an answer at the end. You might get, say, ax plus b. And then down the bottom, you'll have all your lines crossed out here. So you'll have zero on the bottom. But in this question, they're basically telling you that you will actually have a remainder. So this isn't going to be zero. This is going to be a number. So that is what you're looking for in this question. So I'm just going to go through that there. 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 and divide that by x plus 1. So x into 3x squared is going to be 3x. 3x multiplied by x is going to be 3x squared. 3x multiplied by 1 is going to be plus 3x. Now we're going to change the signs down here so we can cancel. So change this to minus so we can cancel these two. But you also have to change this one to minus as well. So now let's cancel these because 3x squared minus 3x squared is 0. 2x minus 3x is going to be minus 1x. Now what we're going to do is bring down this guy here. So we're going to say plus 5. Now x into minus 1x is going to be minus 1. Minus 1 multiplied by x is minus 1x. Minus 1 multiplied by 1 is just minus 1. Let's change the signs so we can cancel these. So I'm going to turn this into a positive sign, but I also have to turn this into a positive sign. So now I can cancel these, and then our remainder is going to be 5 plus 1, which is 6. So the constant, the remainder is going to be 6. So the remainder, c, and you put it in here, 6. So for C part one and two here, if you prove that this is not equal to zero, six is not equal to zero, and then you get the value of six, you're going to get 15 marks between these two questions. So I'm just going to write that down there for both of those. Okay, guys, so that's all for this question. I hope that you found the solution video helpful and that it might have cleared up any problems that you had when you were going through this on your own. I'll see you all in the next video.